target. Our contract is to kill them all. And the client is the general they served under. He wants them dead to keep them from talking. Check a VI on your iDroid for more information. is to eliminate the target. Boss, sorry to keep you waiting. We finally finished analyzing that yellow cake Cypher was moving. There was nothing unusual about the composition of the yellow cake itself. Most of it was oxidized uranium, with the rest being impurities, various metals as well as traces of organic matter. What's interesting is the composition of these impurities. When we checked them against the impurities found in the copper ore, it was clear the yellow cake didn't come from Shinkalobwe, meaning they went to the trouble of mining two sources of uranium, then transported them together in different states. Another thing, we detected a very thin layer of highly enriched uranium in the middle of the yellow cake. Now that is very interesting. It may not be a lot, but it points to the existence of uranium enriching technology. After all, yellow cake can't naturally produce highly enriched uranium. If they could mass produce this, they'd be just one step away from a gun barrel type nuclear bomb. But uranium enrichment requires advanced technology and a large scale facility. If that kind of place existed in Zaire, the Soviet Union wouldn't sit idly by. And there's another question. Where were they transporting the yellow cake and malachite uranium? 
The first place that comes to mind is South Africa. The government was supposed to have abandoned nuclear weapons development after caving to international pressure. But rumors persist that it's continued in secret. Plus, CRS were escorting the truck, and they're based out of South Africa. And then South Africa does have an abandoned test site. If Cypher's involved with nuclear development in South Africa, but how would that fit with their weapon to surpass Metal Gear? We need more information. What are you planning on doing, boss? Putting the target to sleep doesn't count as eliminating them. Neither does knocking them out. It wasn't just Cypher. Back in the Caribbean, every eye in the world was turned on us. A private army, just a bunch of guys with guns, in possession of a nuke? Why wouldn't they be uncomfortable? And that's why you made sure the inspection happened. Well, I thought our best move was to prove to the UN, through the IAEA, that we had no nuke. Of course, I was against us having it in the first place, but that was Snake's decision. The boss wasn't responsible. Well, don't get me wrong, I, I still believed in Snake. I thought I was making the best decision for all of us, that's all. I figured we should get a third party to exonerate us before proof of the nuke did get out. And who better to do that than an organization with international authority? <laughs> so the truth is, you took it upon yourself to agree to an inspection arranged by the UN. Only the inspection was a ruse, and Cypher Strike Force XOF showed up instead. I had no idea that would happen. Enough bullshit! Oh, sure, like I could have known. You know, I was just trying to prove our innocence to the world. What's wrong with that? We're not interested in the excuses you thought up. The truth is objective. Just see it from my point of view. You led XOF to the control tower. They seized it giving them complete control over the base. Moments later, they detonated C4 on the strut legs. Anyone who'd managed to survive was hunted down by the assault force and their choppers. You can't believe I did that on purpose. That was the end of Mother Base. But it wasn't the end for you. How can you? Look, think about it. I lost something too. I built Zeke and it got buried underwater. I am a victim. That raises the big questions. Why were you the only one spared? You got away without a scratch. Why did Strangelove leave the base on the eve of the inspection? You two were close. Strangelove? <laughs> and how did you manage to build something that surpasses Zeke in every way? Because you did everything they told you. <laughs> You're the only one who didn't lose a thing. That is the truth. I was taken away against my will. Skullface forced me to do his research these past nine years. He used me. I lost nine years. Nine years? We all lost nine years. It wasn't just you. I suppose blaming me makes you feel better, does it? But who's gonna give me back all the time I lost? You're not getting anything back. <laughs> You're not a victim here, Emmerich. You're the perpetrator. I didn't know anything. Nobody can back that up. Yeah, all the evidence is at the bottom of the ocean. Five targets being held captive at that outpost. Keep the eye on your eye droid will show you where they are. Kung 
gang of mine. The Civil War's been going on in that region for the last 20 years. It's being fought by what are now two ethnic groups, the Buta and the Mbele. Originally, you could barely tell them apart. But the reason for the current armed conflict goes back to World War I. After the war, their land was colonized by a European power, and it decided to give local control to the Buta. That split the two groups into rulers and subjects, laying the foundations for an inevitable civil war. The friction between them remained even after they won independence from Europe. The Buta are holding on to power to this day, and the Mbele rebels continue to fight back. The conflict is funded by locally mined gold, rare metals, diamonds. They've used the money from those to arm themselves, buy oil and even hire PFs. The Buta administration owns the mining rights to Kunganga Mine. But most of the laborers are Mbele, who they've taken prisoner. The product they've gouged out of their land is bought up by cheap Western corporations. And the civil war is fueled by the profits. That's how it goes. One country's people is split apart by another country. Then the two groups tear up their own land for money in order to fight each other. Now this civil war started by a foreign power is the norm, and it's sucking up all the country's resources. PFs are just the same. They follow the money, taking war with them wherever they go. That goes for us too. It's an endless river of bloody retaliation, and we're standing downstream. Should we make a stand and staunch the flow? Or wade in amongst the corpses and make a bigger splash than the rest? We'll follow your lead, boss. for a fistful of diamonds, huh? And what happens after that? They can't go home. They've only got two options. Heaven or hell. No, there's another. Better heaven. Tape's rolling, boss.
How about it, Cos? Looks like our client just got outbid. We got the recording. Objective accomplished. Let's go. We'll bring him back to Mother Base. Now, for the RV. There's some high ground downriver. I'll have the chopper set down there. Lead the kids to safety. Listen, the kids don't get hurt. No matter what, you bring him back alive. Exit the cave and turn left, then pass through the swamp and follow the river downstream. Extraction arrives at the database. Mission info has been updated. The map has been updated. Boss, if even one of those kids die, the mission's a failure. Be careful. Please select a drop point. Supplies requested. Vehicle drop complete. Please select supplies requested. Target extracted. Anyone else? Mission info has been updated. Vehicle drop complete.
Rain approaching.
Please select a delivery point. Amazing. Mission complete. That right there is why you're the best, boss. The one and only. What you thinking, boss? I'm thinking that he's tougher than he looks. A little training, he'll make himself useful. Never like kids. Especially ones with guns. <coughs> See, kids are natural. No. He's no natural. Far from it. You probably noticed on the way in we've expanded housing. They'll have their own quarters, separate from ours. Won't be counted as staff. So what, we're running a daycare now? They'll learn how to read and write. Do basic jobs. A chance at a real life. Just not from behind a gun. Being behind a gun's what we do, boss. There's no room for angels in our heaven.